This is Pine Talk. I am Justin, also known as Ya Boy, Porky of the Pine. And I am Brian, also known by my handle as 33YN2. Now, there hasn't actually been a lot of news this month. You'll even see that in the blog post that probably has come out before this episode released. But we still got a lot to talk about, just like we always do. So let's get into rapid fire. Wait, uh, did you say you're Brian? Hey, you caught me. I'm (laughs) red-handed. It's me. It's Editor Zed. I'm subbing in for Brian this month. Hey. Zed, also known by your handle, Zed. By by Zed or at it is me Zed on most platforms. Now, actually, we have changed the formula just a little bit with this episode, so uh, let us know how you or what you think about it. Um, but let's actually get into rapid fire this time. Maggie has continued development work on the Pinephone Pro camera. The test app is now capable of shots with pre-configured exposure, analog and digital gain, focus, and flash settings. It can save images in various formats and has a live preview mode. In addition, Megapixels 1.5.0 has released. This allows for users to select a post-processor for pictures and makes the burst length for burst photos dynamic, moving from a fixed three-shot burst to a dynamic number based on sensor gain. Bosch 0.20.0 Beta 1 is now out. Notable features include swipe gestures and quick settings available on both the top and bottom bars. This just in, Plasma Mobile still sucks. Yeah, moving on! Maui Shell, though, continues to be turned into a product I'd actually like to use. Updates continue to happen, and the most recent at the time of recording was on June 23, 2022. The Risk v King, Lup Yun Li, has been working with a new language called Zig and has released guides on using it to develop apps for both the Pine Phone and Risk v devices such as the BL602 and BL604. Quartz 64 progress is heavily impacting the Pine Notes progress in the best way possible. Thanks to Samuel and Maximilian, we're now even closer to a functioning, user-friendly screen. Pine64 is now working on getting it shipped with Linux pre-installed, and I have to begin budgeting to get one myself. Sorry, Valve, no Steam Deck for me. Both the large and the definitely average PP are now back in stock, shipping mid-July. Don't feel bad if you only have the original Pine phone. My mommy said it's plenty big. The Pine64 EU store is opening its doors soon, and actually, by the time this podcast releases, it might have already released. More information on the exact date is to come, at least for us, uh, but be on the lookout for the exact date via pine64.org, if it hasn't already released, of course. In health news, Pork did the big dumb and went and got COVID. His mom is reportedly very disappointed. Pork, what do you have to say for yourself? I regret nothing and no progress has been made on the Pinecone. Martine, of literally anything ever fame, created a video guide for upgrading to the BitTorrent custom firmware on the Pinephone. Talk about easy to follow. YouTuber The Linux Experiment released a video entitled No Coding Skills? Contribute Anyway, which highlights a lot of what needs to happen slash continue to happen for progress to keep happening at the breakneck speed that it is. Making videos, creating pull requests, screenshots, talking in community channels, all of those are the best ways for you to get involved and for these projects that we love to flourish. Resources for how you can contribute will be found in the show notes. You hear that, Zed? What's that? You hear that? Oh, shit. It's mail time! Mail time! (laughs) So we actually got four whole emails this past month. And uh, we do want to read them, and we're actually going to respond to them, uh, because that is the fun way to do this sort of thing. So, to kick it off, we've got from Oliver. Hey guys, thanks for making the Pine64 podcast. I enjoy listening to it. I've noticed that the volume is a bit low compared to other podcasts. I've got the volume slider all the way up on the Pine phone, but at times it's still hard to understand you, especially when the surroundings are not completely quiet. With other podcasts, I have the volume slider at more like 50%. It would be nice if that could be fixed in, for, in future episodes. P.S. Lemiri on Postmarket OX is a really, really experimental thing right now. A lot more work needs to happen before we could ship this like Foster Plasma Mobile. Right now it lives in a branch on PMA ports and does not have binary packages. So no promises, but for curious hackers out there who would like to patch it up until it works, contributions welcome. Get in contact with Anthony and Luca in the merge request. And we will include the link to that merge request in the show notes. Best, Oliver. Well, Oliver, uh, first off, because this is a very rare opportunity that I get to respond to direct 
uh, I wouldn't necessarily criticism, but uh, a suggestion and a, and a recommendation. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not a uh, uh, 100% professional of this, but I've done it um, on salt, small scale for a very long time. Um, starting with this episode moving forward, things should sound a little louder than they would before and should not require that you crank your volume all the way up. Um, so that, that should be addressed here soon. Next up from Tony, greetings. Firstly, thank you for all your effort in presenting this podcast. I look forward to hearing the episodes. I've not yet started to move across to open source. I plan on moving to a Linux DE later this year, and I'm certainly interested in purchasing a range of Pine64 products at some point. Pinebook Pro, Pine Time, Pine Tab, Pine Phone Pro. In the future, I will be looking for mobile phones that have the following. Dual SIM, can be hardware SIM and eSIM. Separate SD card slot, i.e. not hybrid. 5G, coverage is expanding quite rapidly here in Australia, at least in the major metropolitan areas. I see that there's an optional micro SD card option already available. Is there anything in the development roadmap for the other features? Again, my thanks. All the best, Tony. So, we actually, being just community members, can't answer too much about it. However, I can try to give you my random guess on the possibility of these other features. Um, I'm not sure about dual sim hardware-wise. I could foresee software support for um hardware for a single hardware sim card and eSIM, but I personally don't know how any of that works, so I don't know what type of development would go into that sort of thing. Um if in terms of separate SD card slot, as far as I know, that's what we have already. Or the Pine Phone has an SD card slot and a um and a SIM card slot. However, if actually I think what he means is um, it's not in the same like thing. Yeah. Um, by, which is, by non that by non hybrid, I imagine that's what he means. Meaning yeah, that it, it's it's more of a dedicated SD card and dual SIM separate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as far as I know, it's that's purely from speculation and just things that I've seen. But I want to say that they are trying to move the SD card slot to somewhere else. Um, and then as for 5G, I think that's just going to come with uh, maybe the PinePhone 2 or PinePhone 2 Pro. Um, that it, we're, 5G is rapidly expanding all over the world, uh, so it kind of seems natural for that to be part of the progression with the newer hardware. It seems to be more of an eventuality rather than a will-it-happen kind of thing. Now, Zed, this one is for you. It oh. is a um, pitch from my boy Ashiri, uh, or at least I hope it's my boy. Um, I apologize for misgendering you if I did. Hi there, I'm Ashiri from Podchats. I came across your podcast and I loved your recent episode, Pine in a Field on a Mountain Over a River. Would you like to outsource the editing and other time-consuming <laughs> tasks of your products? What do we do? To <laughs> We help podcasters save their time by taking the editing and post-production work off their shoulders. Just record and send your audio to us, and we can take it from there. Audio, show notes, social media, graphics, my cat walking from the monitor, we cover up <laughs> everything for you. Moreover, even our payment plans allow you to create customized plans according to your needs. Audio post-production, video post-production, show notes and transcription, graphic and publishing to destinations, consulting. With Podchads, you can do all your work in one place. You are the one who decides how and what services to use. Get a quote. Happy podcasting. Ashiri, and then uh, the scam link to this website, which we are not actually <laughs> using the name of this service because yeah, we are no. not wanting to actually advertise we're, it. We're not going to advertise for anybody, and this was hilarious to see because it's one thing when we've got someone like Oliver who's like, hey, just a little thing here. I've got, I've got a little bit of a request. It's a little quiet. Could you turn it up a little bit? I can't hear all that well, or I can't hear you guys all that well, and I'd really like to listen. And then you just have someone who comes in and goes, hey, <laughs> everything you do sucks. You should hire us to do it for you. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Ashiri, I think we're good. Um, <laughs> that's good, though. Um, yeah, I don't know what money we're going to be using to, to pay for that service. <laughs> yeah, just kind of across the board. 
Alrighty, and uh, for our last bit of mail, uh, we have an email from Eric, and his email reads as such. Are you guys planning on adding Ubuntu Touch? If so, please let me know. So, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that question, um, because adding it doesn't... It's kind of vague in terms of being on a podcast, being Pine64. Um, Perhaps he's, he's it, referring to, like, a community edition phone. Like, are you guys that, adding Ubuntu Touch as like a as like a shippable OS? Um, yeah, that actually is a idea. Um, as far as I know, they are sticking with uh, Plasma Manjaro, um, or they might be changing it to Maui Shell once that becomes a thing. Um, I know uh, some people upon receipt have been up unhappy with uh, Plasma Mobile, um, and I will save my opinion on that. In terms of on the podcast. Um, the reason why we usually don't talk about Ubuntu Touch is because it doesn't have official support for the Pine Phone, and so there doesn't seem to be much support for that in the Pine 64 sphere. However, I do know some people use it, um, and I'm not sure what's really going on on that end in terms of development and why um, it's not very focused on, in or why why the Pine Phone isn't a supported device for it. Uh, however, in terms of yeah, anything else, yeah, I don't. I know we did have the UB Ports Community Edition, um, probably what, two years ago now, and uh, that did ship with Ubuntu Touch, but that was the only contribution or uh, the only piece of it that I know has actually been that that has actually been connected with Pine sixty four. And I suppose we'll go ahead and move on to kind of what we wanted to generally talk about um, as really lifelong gamers. The amount of not talking about gaming on Linux um, is something that I kind of wanted to talk about because I think it's a really interesting topic. The biggest contribution to uh, gaming on Linux recently is, of course, the Steam Deck. Everybody knows about the Steam Deck. It runs Arch now. Steam OS 3 uh, is Arch based and uh, it's. Neat. Um, I, I am unfortunately in one of the situations where I would buy one, um, but my use case makes no sense for a Steam Deck. I've already got a, a pretty damn good uh, gaming computer. I've got a Steam Link hardware box um, that I have in my living room. Works just fine. If I want to sit on the couch and play games, I sit on the couch and play games. Um, you could buy an NVIDIA Shield for my use, because most of the time I'm going to want to play it on a TV anyway. Um, I think the biggest upside would be, for me, is if I, I was to go to friends' houses for, like, LAN parties and stuff. Um, the Steam Deck with a dock is far less bulky than even a laptop. Yeah, and generally my use case is pretty similar. Um, I did want it, I did pre-order one. Uh, but as of today, my pre-order did expire. Um, I have a PC that gets me by. I don't really care too much about playing AAA games anyway. Um, and really, the more I've thought about it, the reason why I wanted one in the first place was because at the time I was playing a lot of CRPGs, and it would be really convenient to just be you know sitting there on the couch playing a CRPG because it's not that intensive anyway. But the more I think about it, it's not that intensive. I can just, like Zed said, use Steam Link, even using the Steam Link app on my phone and casting it to a Chromecast. It's it would be pretty rough, but the I don't need um I don't I don't care about input delay really because it's you know just point and click. But it did interest me. Um, and yeah, I I figured I was gonna reserve it in any way just to. Just in case there was a situation that I thought, oh, wow, it would actually be great for me to have that. But the more I think about it, I have a Switch sitting right next to me right now. And I just pulled it out of where it was. It was basically in a drawer. And I hadn't touched it since Metroid Dread released. And I was looking through the store. I was trying to find a game to play. And I, what I've determined is either I'm going to commit back to Metroid Dread, commit to Nino Kuni, or just not play it at all. And right now it's seeming more like it's going to be a not play it at all thing. Uh, and generally, I haven't had much of an interest in the 
concept of gaming on the go in a very long time. And I would much rather, especially now that I'm playing with um, things like the BL602 and stuff like that, I would much rather just tinker around and learn something, uh, not to shit talk gaming at all, <laughs> but I, I feel more productive and it f I myself feel better uh, just messing around on my ThinkPad than um, playing a game on a Switch. Yeah, and the Switch is a great, like, I, I'm, I'm on the other hand where I love my Switch. I have, a, I have an OLED Switch and I love the hell out of it and there are tons of games that I would play um, because sometimes I don't need the game to be the best that it could possibly be. There are games that, um, like the um, Ace Attorney trilogy, um, doesn't require me to sit at my computer. Um, if I had my druthers, whatever those are, um, I would have a Steam Link app on my Switch. And I would just play my games on my Switch. Um, but that, of course, that doesn't make any sense. They're competitors. Um, that being said, the Steam Summer Sale began, uh, and boy are my arms tired. Um, <laughs> that's <so> fucking <laughs> stupid. Um, so my wallet is feeling the burn. Um, and I have already, I, I make a habit of buying games for my friends. You'll get one soon, Pork. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, you oh, you will. Um, oh. I buy games for my friends because I've basically got every game I could possibly want. Uh, my Steam library is somewhere in the neighborhood of rapidly approaching a thousand games. If I Ooh. check it in real time, I'm at 707 games. I've got plenty yeah. of games in my library, and I just bought Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> I bought Elden Ring and uh, Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe because uh, the Stanley Parable, for anyone who's not played it, is an experience. I it love is so worth it. Um. The game itself does a lot of meta commentary on the idea of a rehashing or a re-release, and how it's like, oh, well, you're just cashing in on, on the legacy of the Stanley Parable and the new content. Like it's, I, I I will just make the suggestion that you play it because it is worth it to buy it in its own right. And I I did uh, wishlist it as soon as I saw that it was a thing. <clears throat> oh well, dang! I might just have to. <clears throat> oh. Oh no. <laughs> um other yes. kind of tangentially uh you know gaming things um for the deck itself currently there's an, an issue that I, I managed to pull up on uh uh Steam's Twitter, the on deck Twitter account, um showing that there's currently some boot looping going on with certain decks um being what I suppose is losing power mid update. Um and basically, Twitter said, here, follow the, the wiki um, instructions on how to reset your deck. Um, <laughs> if you find yourself boot looping, definitely check out, um, definitely check out Valve's Twitter, because they have uh, information and real-time updates. They're really good about uh, getting out updates to problems that are going on. Um, but imagine that, man. Like, it'd be like yeah. buying a Switch and, <laughs> and then just having it turn off <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> And and before we actually continue to the the next thing that you wrote, I do want to continue commenting on general Steam Deck, and um, it's it's a complaint. I mentioned this while we were typing all this up. Um, it, it's it's a complaint, but it's not really that much of a complaint. Um, but the the existence of the Steam Deck, while it has been amazing for gaming on Linux, um, the thing that has frustrated me the most is things like Proton DB and just Proton Focus in general has gone mostly just to the Steam Deck, and not having a Steam Deck and not and probably not ever getting one, um, it does become mildly inconvenient for me. Uh, and one specific example I can give is around it was probably about two months ago. It was right when the Elden Ring hype started dying off. Was when I bought Elden Ring, and it. And the, the support on Proton was really bad for me. I tried on multiple different versions of Proton. I tried multiple different settings. And my frame rate was just awful. It wasn't anything to do with my hardware. It was purely with the Pro... Or it was purely with Proton. And then there was an update and controller support just completely died. And meanwhile, on the Steam Deck, it's working flawlessly. Uh, which is great for Steam Deck users. 
And I imagine all of those problems I was having might be, might have been fixed by now because that was several months ago and I know there have been a few updates, but it was it's just kind of a thing that very slightly grinds my gears. Um but all in all I am definitely really happy that the Steam Deck does exist and it has made gaming on Linux a lot more mainstream and um people are, you know, contributing and it's I don't know, it's just good. Pretty cool. Yeah. I, I got Spyro Reignited Trilogy finally and it ran flawlessly. I don't know what it would ran like before the Steam Deck, but there was there's actually a bug with Proton, which Steam Deck users did find, I think, first, where the way that the audio is written in the cutscenes, like the way that it's mm-hmm. coded in, for some reason on Proton it will speak a different language. <laughs> and so I I start running the game and all of it's in Spanish or the the audio is in Spanish. <laughs> the every the menus and everything are all in English. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and then and I was like, wait, that I remember in the third game there actually is like a whole thing where or at least I, I could be misremembering this, but the girl that steals the egg in the first cutscene mm-hmm. actually was speaking Spanish. Like, uh, that was something I remember playing on the PS1, but then I looked into it, and they're like, yeah, it's a Proton issue, just run the script and we'll fix it. And so I did that, and it is fixed, but it was really amusing to have the game in Spanish. I imagine that it'd be kind of jarring, um, and I think you're right, but I think you're, well, I don't think you're right, I think you're 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 on the right track. I think it wasn't Spanish that she was speaking, but Portuguese, which, I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, languages. it might have been, yeah. Um, but that, that's hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I know that prior to the Steam Deck, I did own it and I was playing it. Um, it ran mostly okay, but much like, you know, any translational layer for Vulcan, it has this nasty habit of until you play the game for like six hours, um, you'll have hitching, like minor oh, hitches, yeah. Yeah, I uh, get which that is a lot. so annoying. It's so, so, so annoying. Um... But the good news is, and this is just kind of like a tip to everybody who's listening, um, you can buy, or you can't buy, but you can download pre-exported shader caches uh, for games um, for use with Steam. Um, And you can use those shader caches so that you don't have to build the caches yourself. That actually be great for something like bullets per minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, every time you enter a room, your FPS goes to negative four. Shout out to Bullets Per Minute, by the way. That game is what awesome. Good game. So good. Have difficult you ever as all hell. No, I haven't finished it, but it is difficult it, as all it, hell. It took me about 10 hours, I want to say, to actually finish my first playthrough. Oh, it's a, it's the Dark Souls of Rhythm Shooters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kind of other uh, deck things um, that I kind of wanted to mention and I think is really cool because you just don't see companies like do this anymore outside of like, you know, Pine 64 does it and some, you know, variable uh, various other um, uh, 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 retailers and and manufacturers do it, but for the most part, like, generally, like bigger companies like Valve don't do this. Um, So, Valve actually partnered up with iFixit.com and replacement parts are available right now. If something happens to your deck and you need to fix it, you can go and buy replacement parts, no question to ask. Um, about it, how it va- va- uh, about how it vers what's the word I'm looking for about how it Fair. invalidates what's it I was saying fares but no no no, um, no I'm thinking um <coughs> void void sword as far as if it voids your warranty or not uh, I couldn't speak but um, I imagine um with them providing them there'd be some leniency there. Um, especially because they have for the longest time been like, hey, if you really need something really critical replaced, we recommend you come to us. We'll work with you. Um, and just shout out to Valve for be- being the good guys um, for this sort of thing. Um, really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, of course, I've heard rumblings of uh, of <laughs> Valve still messing with CSGO on the deck. Um, I'm a really big fan of... Uh, Three clicks Philip on YouTube. 
Um, and he is a YouTuber who is very CSGO oriented. Um, and so he's made a couple videos on it. He's like, man, this is awful. And then they'll do an update. He's like, man, this is great. And they'll do another update. Man, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of funny to see. And, uh, of course, uh, they've gotten various updates to the OS on, on, on Steam Deck. And every time there's an update, like every time that Valve puts out a, an update to the Steam Deck, there is a flood of fixes, um, of things, just general, um, quality of life fixes, um, near as I can tell, um, one of the things that they meant, um, one of the things that they, that is not necessarily specific to the SteamOS update, um, it's more of the client update, um, is they added remote play together support, um, oh. which is awesome. If, if you've never played with remote play together, um, stuff like Gang Beasts and um, Couch Co-op games. So, um, like Towerfall Ascension. Towerfall Ascension. Um, what is it? Uh, Overcooked. Um, other like uh, uh, couch co-op games. Uh, some racing games. Um, of course, I'm going blank now that I'm thinking, um, now that I have to think about it. Is what is it? Uh, the Quarry that is that. I know that has couch I think, co-op. I don't know if that's required though. No, I think I think the quarry uh does allow uh online online multiplayer. Okay. Um but the quarry looks really interesting. Um but yeah, no, uh uh like couch co-op games like that um being able to play those on the deck. Imagine like just like you would a, like a Switch. You're with a bunch of your friends and you want to sit down and play a game together, you can either put it on your dock and throw it up on the TV, um, or you can just play with multiple consoles, and if you've got friends who brought over their laptop, or are playing on, you know, at their house and stuff like that, like, remote play together is a really cool feature. Um, and it gets overlooked a lot. Yeah. So I think that's enough Valve speak for a podcast, but, um, talking about Pine 64 gaming, that is... Yeah something that I haven't done myself. I've been very intrigued by it. The biggest problem that I seem to run into is the fact that um, I run Postmarket OS on my main PinePhone, and uh, realistically, I'm not touching my PinePhone Pro very much while it's still being um, developed, but honestly, I could throw Arch on there, and I am really interested in seeing all the work that's been going on with Box86 and Box64, and um, I've seen people play uh, what Fallout One and Two, and um, just other CRPGs like the like I was mentioning earlier. The reason why I would want a Steam Deck in the first place is to play CRPGs. That's pretty much I I, I played Atom RPG, and I was like, wow, this is the best game I've ever played. And I've just realized that that is the genre that appeals to me the most. Hell, I play RuneScape, so it makes sense. But um. I would like to refer to the Alpine wiki for gaming on, on Pine64 products. Yes. Uh, gaming on Pine64 products is a thing. Yes. Um, and I have seen, it was very poorly performing, but I saw, it was a video, I, I think it was on Reddit somewhere, um, where someone had managed to get my favorite Linux native game playing on the Pine phone, which is, uh, it was, it was very poor and it crashed very quickly. Um, but it is Super Tux Cart. It is, it, it, it's a game so good it got ported everywhere else. That's how good it is. Um, and it looked awful. Man, you're behind the times. <laughs> like, I'm it just, it looked really bad. Super but Tux Cart is, like, all... fully running on the Pine Phone now. Oh, wait, for real? <laughs> yeah. Whoa! I, I, just, I, I just realized we had a really bad delay there, so you cut off from me while I had talked. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was a thing on... Well, I was playing it two years ago, uh, and yeah, it was it was rough. But now I, I I haven't played it myself, but I'm pretty sure, especially on the pro, it runs amazingly. Super Tux Cart is like, look, I I my original um my my Linux experience started with Mandriva and like Ubuntu six ten like old old and i remember being 
in that era of Linux and games kind of being like not a thing. Um, and when Super Tux Cart was released, I followed its updates really closely. Um, and over time, I just kind of went by the wayside. The fact that it's playable on a phone now, um, that's neat. That's just that's just super neat, and I'd love to sit down and play that on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to install Arch on my Pro and uh, let you yes. experience that. I need it. I need it in my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there definitely are people who are using their pros, uh, specifically their pros. I mean, I've, there, I have seen people using a regular Pine Phone too, but just using them as a portable gaming system. Um, they're using it for emulators or uh, you know, Box 86, Box 64, it's kind of playing lower end games, um, which I feel like for a lot of us Linux users, like that's kind of the games we play anyway. Uh, yep. So, I mean, again, I, I play RuneScape. It's a, what, 20 year old game now? Or over 20 years old. Um, and that, that is the game that I play. And then, yeah, Atom RPG is new, but it's a CRPG. It's you know, designed like the original Fallouts. Um, Speaking of, uh, of old games like that, um, I know it's probably, we, I believe we mentioned it last episode, but I just want to shout it out again. Um, under BigTor Custom Firmware, um, running doom on the on the on the pie phone <laughs> modem <laughs> yeah i think that is the coolest thing i love that that's a thing and i i know it's like you know everybody's like oh doom can run on anything they, i watched a video um they installed it on some ibm workstations a power pc ibm workstation it was like the native dos port not just like the <laughs> not just like one of the newer like open gl ports or anything it was it was really neat um and the more things that run, uh, doesn't Doom run on the Pine Tab? <laughs> I believe so. Because yeah, Pine Tab is, I want to say, a Pine Book Pro uh, without a keyboard, essentially. Just, I, I want Doom running on all kinds of silly stuff. I, I was one of those people that thought it was hilarious that uh, some people got Doom to run on a um, on an HP printer. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was sad to find out the pregnancy test one was fake, though. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That would have been great, though. I, yeah. I would have been behind it 100%. It does run on the Pine Note. That is something we definitely talked about on the, podca- or on the podcast. Uh, but Shout out to Doom on the Pine. A- pine actually, Note. now with the refresh rate working pretty well on the Pine Note, it might be playable. I guess I got to harass Danked about that. <laughs> I need a custom ROM for Danked, um, where the Doom soundtrack just replaced with... <laughs> just want trans music. Just want trans music! <laughs> I need that. I need that very much. So, I definitely think that was an episode. Um, what do you think, Zed? Do you want to keep going, or are we, we good? I think we're good. I think we've discussed just about everything that there is to discuss at this moment in time. Um... But of course, if you have suggestions for what we should talk about next time, or things that we overlook this week, or this month rather, um, definitely shoot us an email. Yes, that email is pinetalk at pine64.org if you would like to be featured on the uh, mail time segment. Um, we definitely will read your email and we will respond to it. Um, we do have a good bit of knowledge kind of on, uh, not on the inside, but... Um, you know, we kind of lurk a lot and we pay attention to what people are saying around the community. And um, so we can sometimes answer questions specifically about some um, OS or some UIs. Uh, I can definitely tell you stuff about SXMO. Um, and uh, Brian can tell you stuff about uh, Plasma Mobile or uh, Maui Shell. Uh, as for Fosh, we have our opinions. Um, but definitely send us a message there. Um, there's also, uh, what is it? We have Mastodon. Uh, so we got emails. Uh, Mastodon is, um, talkpine at fostodon.org and, um, Twitter is at talkpine. Uh, so you can send us messages on any of those. Um, in terms of the viewer mail thing, we're only going to read the mail from the email. Uh, but any messages that you send on, um, Mastodon or Twitter, we will definitely address them 
Um, and if it is something that we can read uh, or it makes sense to read, then we definitely will. Uh, if you have any suggestions for us, any recommendations, if you just want to talk to us, just have a conversation with us, um, definitely reach out. Uh, you know, there's Zed slash It's Me Zed on multiple different platforms. Um, I'm Porky the Pine on both Matrix and Discord. Brian is 33YN2 on Matrix and Discord. Um, and uh, I've definitely had someone reach out to me before talking about the field server. Um, and uh, I did start working with him a good bit about, or a good bit with that. Uh, and uh, we're people, we're, we're community members. Uh, we, we're just looking to have fun too. So yeah, uh, definitely reach out to us. Um, well, I, I if you've got nothing else, and and I know for sure I've got nothing else. I, I think that uh, I think that wraps this up. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to steal your line. Till next time. <laughs>